Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CDM. Let me just turn that volume down there. Uh, just give you an update on where I've been going with this particular radio. Um, I over the last couple of days I have um, made up the IEF strip with the first IF amplifier, the crystal filter, and the second IF amplifier. And that got me thinking about how much overall gain I'm going to need for the radio from the input all the way through to the speaker um, from a gain distribution point of view. So what I elected to do, because I'm, I'm conscious that um, the AM signal here coming into the shack is a whole lot sh um, stronger in terms of um, signal strength than I would be or would need to have if I wanted to detect or was detecting more of the point a weak SSB signal on HF so I don't need to have from an overall point of view um, as much gain as I would for a um, for like I say for an SSB HF rig so what I decided to do to try and get my head around how much gain I would need is to utilize some existing circuits I had in the jug box which was a uh, an AF amplifier here which was built some time ago uh, an infinite impedance detector, which we'll have a look at in a sec, um, and the rest I've, I've made as part of this radio. So bolting this all together, and as you can hear, that's what we're getting. So uh, in terms of overall volume, in other words gain, uh, overall it's just fine. Um, I'm, I'm more than happy that we have sufficient gain. Noting that the outdoor antenna, um, this is the proper, it's the big outdoor antenna, so what I'm going to do, and what I think I do need to do, um, is uh, replace that outdoor antenna with a short wire antenna here in the shack, and then more than likely then I'll need to add just a small amount of uh, RF amplification uh, between the bandpass filter and the first mixer, that is only one mixer from this, uh, just to, to bump that um, signal strength up to get through to get a, um, a good signal out through the speaker. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole reason why I've, I've done this. But um, as a first go, it's, it's actually sounding good. So that's that was music as we heard before. Um, and, and audio sounds, or let's say audio to straight voice, sounds fine. And what I'm very happy with is actually the stability of that, that oscillator. It's quite amazing, you know, you can actually touch the, um, in fact I'll go and touch that, Chris, that yeah. you can put your hand all over this, and it's fine. Microphonics, no, no, um, no change in frequency there, which is great. Uh, of course, put your hand around the other side where the two trim capacitors are, then yeah, every expectation that was going to throw the frequency off. But generally speaking, hand over the, uh, the yeah the the, uh, the knob, not a problem at all. So that's good. So more than happy with that. Um, which again, from where I'm going to have this radio, which is sitting up here on the on the um, on the shelf, uh, I am not going to bother. Uh, having that shielded and from what I can see from tuning across the entire band um, I don't have any birdies or anything else which um, I wasn't expecting anyway but um, it's fine so there you go okay so just turning the attention then to to the IF amplifiers um, I tried a couple of different things there just to try something different so for a start let me just bring across here I uh, was looking at um, some fixed Biasing um, configuration here with the collector, so again the emitter uh, tied directly through to ground uh, with a simple fixed biasing between the base and the uh, collector uh, using that formula, formula there, noting no, not having to within the, the, the square brackets here minus RC because I don't have any um, um, resistor in the, uh, in the collector circuit, I'm just having that uh, transformer there. Uh, and they actually worked really well, no problems at all. Um, the, the only reason why I elected to go with the other configuration, which is this one here, is because I initially thought I was going to play around with having um, a variable gain um, in the emitter circuit. So I was initially thinking with the radio I was going to have on the front panel uh, an IF gain control, which would ultimately vary 
the, the gain of the, the IF strip. Um, I've actually gone away from that because um, I'm not tuning to a range of different signals coming into the, to the radio here. It's just going to sit on the one frequency. And unless that uh, radio transmitter down the road is varying its output power, I don't need to vary my, my gain of my radio. I can just have it fixed. So um, as you'll see, uh, in the end I actually did away with this trim pot here. And I'm just running the two IF amplifiers with full emitter degeneration. So in other words, no bypassing of the emitter resistor uh, to gain more gain. And uh, it's working just fine. So in terms of uh, the approach I took for these two amplifiers, uh, a little bit different from what I've done in the past. Uh, in the past I've had in the, in the uh, collector circuit a transformer to transform uh, the load up to a notional 200 ohms to present to the collector. Uh, in this particular case I decided to do away with that and I'm just using an RFC which is in this case 8 turns on FT37-43 and, uh, and to run this straight into and in this particular case if this was the first IEF straight into the crystal filter and then for the second IEF um, into the infinite impedance detector uh, and it's working just fine uh, all I had to do and all I elected to do is put on the input and the output which we'll see in a sec um, some resistors to present uh, the right um, impedance to the uh, from a resistive point of view to the crystal filter anyway so in terms of the values uh, for that particular circuit uh, nothing different there I have uh, in this particular case decided to set the emitter voltage at 1 volt uh, and the quiescent current through the device at 10 milliamps so RE then would be from ohms law 1 volt at the emitter divided by 10 milliamps comes out at 100 ohms uh, as I just mentioned before, the, the, the final circuit has a 100 ohm resistor, but I was looking and I did play with a 100 ohm uh, trim pot, as we see here, with that 100 nanofarad capacitor on the wiper. For R2, so the bottom resistor of the voltage divider bias there, uh, 1 volt here plus 0.7 will give us the voltage across here, because that's sitting at ground, um, divided by 10 times the base current. And what I will do here for completeness is have what I have done. Uh, it's 100 nano, 100 microfarads for completeness. Uh, so um, 1.7 volts divided by 10 times the base current comes out 29.41. So I use a 3k ohm as the nearest standard value. For R1, the bottom of those two resistors, uh, 12 volts, which is VCC minus voltage at the base, 1.7 volts divided by 11 times the base current, 16199, I'm going to use 15k ohms. And as I just mentioned, uh, in terms of the crystal filter, the spec sheet for that um, says that its input and output impedance is 910 ohms, which is quite interesting because there is actually a standard value resistor for 910 ohms, so that's what I've done. So I've just physically placed on the input uh, and the output of the crystal filter a uh, 910 ohm resistor and then just plugged the two amplifiers as designed before straight in just to see how it was going to work and um, as far as I'm concerned it works pretty good so uh, I think for this stage of the game I'm going to leave it just like that uh, I mentioned that I had used uh, the infinite impedance uh, detector which I have used before uh, I do want to do some more work on this um, and the whole idea of that test circuit there was just to uh, check out the gain, but I do want to go through and have another look at this particular infinite impedance detector uh, to see if it can be any better or any worse. Um, quite frankly, it's actually working quite well as it is, so I'm not quite entirely sure how that's going to work, but hey, let's have a look at it. Um, but there it is, just using a J310 out of the junk box uh, in this particular configuration here, and like I say, working really well. Um, I wasn't going to talk about it now, but I had played around with an envelope detector um, the last time I played around with an AM radio, and you know, I just didn't really, it just didn't have the same performance as this particular detector here, so um, that's why I sort of went straight back to this one for this particular radio, and, and like I say, it's working really well. Anyway, so 
I think that's probably all I need to uh, talk about for now. Um, suffice to say, it's um, it's working really well. So more than happy with that. Um, the the background, I guess. Um, don't need to listen to that. Um, what else? What else? Sitting here humming away. Uh, I think that's probably about all, really. Uh, if I haven't mentioned it, uh, the audio frequency. Oops, it is the audio frequency amplifier over the back. Uh, push pull with a couple of um, tip 32s on the output. Uh, any 5534 low noise op amp uh, in the middle with a, um, a, B, a 2N 3904 driver into that. I do want to relook at that that whole uh, AEF amplifier there. Um, where I do build will need to have the same um, level of amplification because as we've just seen overall the gain of the radio which requires it obviously um, um, is, is working well so I need to make sure that whatever I do build in there uh, from a gain point of view is at least at the same level as what it is there but um, so I do want to have another look at that and other than that there's actually nothing else to do for the radio so I've got the bandpass filters all done the input um, I've, I've mentioned the the need to have a think about uh, an RF amplifier between the uh, bandpass filter and the, the mixer. IF amplifiers, I'm not going to play around with those anymore. I'm quite happy with those in terms of their performance. Um, we just talked about the impedance, infinite impedance detector over there. No need for that. Um, obviously clean this up. This is purely just in a uh, test configuration with some bits of copper board. Uh, the IF, so again the VFO over here, uh, that's uh, working out really well too. So more than happy with its final configuration, uh, is including how it's been mounted here. I don't think there's any need to have this uh, covered in any way. Um, my hand in the front here is not impacting the, the frequency in any way. And um, yeah, so it's good. Tune all the way through the band, I'm not, I'm not hearing any birdies or, or anything to suggest that um, there's a shielding issue. So not that I was expecting to think, but uh, that, that aside, um, it's just fine. Anyway, so there you go, uh, quite happy with that, and I'll keep soldering away and keep playing, and I'll provide an update uh, when I have something. Cheers all, and uh, take care.